Welcome back to the Realm Report. It's been an interesting month with a lot happening in the old world, so let's jump right into the topics. This month we added community-specific tags to the Discord. These tags will allow for anyone to address a specific subset of oldies, rather than having to tag everyone in the Discord. I did my best to assign these tags based on references I had available, so you should see them in your Discord profile. If you aren't seeing the tags for your communities in your profile, you can submit them to me through the Submit a Badge channel, and I'll get them added as soon as I can. We've had a few developments recently that I feel I should address. Following Princess's ascension to leader of A&W, the group immediately found itself on hard times. Having parted ways with Peculiar, and with Plague solely focused on growing his own community, A&W entered a period of rebuilding. After holding a series of interviews, Sam was recruited to the group. In addition, Sam brought along three white like paste clones, who were just trying to eke out a living in the capital and were enticed by the promise of stable employment. But not long after that, Zulu found himself increasingly frustrated with the lack of recognition for his work in the shopping district and decided to embark on a political campaign with Princess as his campaign manager. With the promise to do something, the two placed propaganda all around the capital. And for his work cleaning up this propaganda, Unworthy Chicken was awarded Groundskeeper of the Month. Unfortunately for A&W, this campaign had completely drained their funding, and they were forced to make budget cuts. And with the clones being the most recent hires, they were subsequently let go. Feeling guilty, Sam decided to hire them on at the sweet shop and vowed to keep them on if they could find a way to drum up business. Meanwhile, I had been dealing with a bit of a clone-related issue myself. Now, as you may recall, after the clones were released into the old world, they eventually developed their own personalities and styles. However, there was one clone who had yet to find his own identity. This clone had difficulty distinguishing reality from fiction and believed himself to be the real white like paste. Initially, it was just a minor annoyance. I'd walk into my office and find him at my desk. I'd go to the studio and catch him filming the Realm Report. But as many times as I kicked him out, he'd keep coming back. Now, having recently fought off a maniac who attempted to crash a Star Destroyer into my house, I was a little worn out and just wanted a moment's peace. So after casually breaking the news to him that his entire existence was a lie, I encouraged him to find a sense of purpose and carve out a name for himself in the old world. Eventually, he'd make his way over to the library, where he'd spend his days reading through some of the old world's finest literature but there was one book in particular that would have a profound effect on him. And the further he got into the book, the more he was inspired. He envisioned an epic battlefield where oldies would go to war with one another until there was only one left standing. With this new sense of purpose, he'd adopt the name White Like Snow and set out to establish his new tournament, which he'd call the War Game. Over in the shopping district, the trio of clones had been looking for ways to turn a profit. Determined to bring new business to the sweet shop, they began placing cake all throughout the capital. Unfortunately, they neglected to include any kind of signage alongside them, leaving many confused and wondering what was up with all the cake. And with no increase in sales, Sam was forced to let them go. Down and out and wondering what to do next, the trio was approached by White Like Snow who offered them the opportunity to get involved with war games. But knowing that they would be completely useless in terms of actually building anything, he instead sent them on a scouting mission to find oldies capable of constructing large-scale builds at an accelerated rate. When one of the clones made their way over to the island, they spotted Willow working on renovations to her base, and it was obvious that she would be the one. So Willow was brought before White Like Snow, with the promise that she'd be released once the battlefield for war games had been completed. And about 12 seconds later, Willow had completed the battlefield for war games, and she went home. Soon after that, I was invited to see the battlefield for myself, and it seemed like it would be an interesting idea for next month's event, but more on that later. This month before the start of the Withering event, we held an auction over in the capital. There are a few people who had been asking when the next auction would be held, so we decided to do it on the day of the event when we knew people were already planning to be online. 
It was definitely a smaller scale auction from last time, but personally I preferred this as it made payment distribution a much simpler process. Moving forward, we're planning to have a more consistent schedule for future auctions. The idea is that we'd hold one auction every four months, with the next one coming in August, and the final one of the year taking place in December. Feel free to submit stuff from now until then, so we can start compiling a list for the next auction. After the last TOW tour, which came down to a shootout between Black Lightning and Cryptic Charger, it was clear that we needed a dedicated location to resolve these types of situations in the future. So this month we held the first in a planned series of group builds with the objective of getting that done. Since the golf course is essentially a giant circle, the plan was to utilize the area in the center, which until this point has remained mostly untouched. During the initial meetup, we worked on clearing up trees and flattening out the area. Next month we'll be picking the project back up, so I hope to see you over there. Thanks to everyone who came out and participated in the group build. This month we held the first ever withering event using the shopping district as our battlefield. Oldies were instructed to leave any gear they'd like to bring with them at a predetermined location the night before. We weren't quite sure how this was going to go, as we were using a hardcore resource pack for the event, meaning that everyone only had one life. Overall, we had 17 people participate in the event, and we faced off against 11 withers. The biggest issue we encountered was dealing with lag from all the floating entities created by withers destroying some of the more fully stocked shops. Several of us worked to pick up those entities, which helped reduce the lag overall, but we may look into other ways of handling this moving forward. If you missed the event, we're planning on doing a second one in a few months at a different location, so I hope you'll join us for that one as it was a pretty fun time. Next month we'll be holding the third race in the Grand Prix series over at the Aquarius. Throughout February, Chozo did a series of streams while working on another racetrack, which he named Cuttlefish Cove. The thing that's unique about this track is that it was built entirely underwater, so it has a really cool look to it. I hope to see you over there as these races are good events for first timers and are generally a lot of fun. The Aquarius Grand Prix 2023 will be held on May 14th. On May 28th, we'll be having our first ever War Games event. In War Games, you'll make your way around the battlefields, collecting whatever armor and weapons you find as you compete in a battle royale style free for all. The ultimate goal is to become the last oldie standing. Hopefully, we can get a decent turnout for this event, as it'll be even better the more oldies we have for it. Originally, the plan was to hold this in the old world itself, but following the withering, I've decided to go ahead and do it in a similar way to that event where it'll be a copy of the map with a hardcore resource pack applied. This will allow spectators to get a much better view of the event itself after they've been eliminated, so I hope to see you at War Games on May 28th. And that wraps things up for this edition of the Realm Report. See you on the server. I got a bunch of pictures. We're good. Okay, cool. All right, that means I can do this now. Yeah, we could hop out and then oh, put the old world back up. I'm in. I'm in the other third person. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>